Thanks for joining me today, guys. So we are going to get started on our gift tag box. And I have two sheets of 12 by 12 paper here. This is our designer series paper from the Presents and Pinecones collection. Very, very pretty. This side is the Cherry Cobbler kind of tone on tone print. And I'm gonna use this for the slide on cover. And then I have a piece of 12 by 12 Old Olive, and I'm going to use this for the box as well as the insert. So to get started on the box, I wanna trim this down to five and a half by 11. So I'm gonna cut it at five and a half first. And then I'm going to trim an inch off of the end. I'm going to set this aside and we'll do our scoring in a minute. With the other half of that Old Olive 12 by 12 sheet, I'm going to trim a piece down at 3 inches. So we measure 3 by 12. And this is what we're going to use for our insert. And for our cover, we need a piece that measures a 9 by 9 and a half. So I'm going to trim three inches off and that will give me my nine. And then I'm going to rotate it and trim off two and a half. And that will give me my nine and a half inches. And there we go, nine by nine and a half. And now with our Simply Scored board, I'm going to start by scoring the box portion of my project today. And I'm going to score it at one inch on all four sides. Bringing in the insert and with the 12 inch side up at the top, I'm going to score in the following places. Two and a quarter, two and three quarters, three and one quarter, five and a half, six, six and a half, eight and three quarters, nine and a quarter, and nine and three quarters. So you should have three sets of score lines that look like this. And now bringing in our sheet of nine by nine and a half on the nine and a half inch side, and you wanna be careful because it is almost square. Make sure you have the nine and a half inch side up at the top of your scoreboard and score in the following places. One, four and a half, five and a half, and nine. And this is what you have. With our bone folder, we're going to crease all of those score lines. I'm starting with the half inch score line on my designer series paper. And here's our main box portion. And while I have this out, I'm going to take my paper snips and I'm going to snip it here, just up to the score line. And then I'm going to miter out that edge and do the same here. and on the opposite end. And I'm going to use some fast fuse on the right side of those flaps. And then when you fold it up, just match those corner edges.
And if you have anything poking out, just go ahead and trim that down. Now to score our insert, it's a slightly different. What we want is the middle of each of these section of three lines. We want that middle line to be up, as in a mountain, and we want these two outside score lines to be down, as in a valley. So I'm gonna fold the first piece like this. Then I'm going to accordion fold it back on itself. And then again, fold it towards myself. So this is what you should have. Kind of looks like a little heart line. Repeat with the remaining pieces. And this is what you should have. Okay, three little mountains. And now I want those to stick together. So I'm gonna flatten this out slightly and I'm just gonna take some fast fuse and run that down one side of that middle score line on each section. And then I'm going to fold it completely over, matching the two outside score lines to glue that little mountain together. Okay, so this is what you should have. Now I'm going to set that inside my box. And depending on how accurate you are with your cutting, I may have been a little off or my measurements may have been a little off. So all I'm gonna do is trim just a hair off of the edges. That should sit in there nice. I am going to run this piece through the Big Shot and you're probably thinking, um, how are you gonna run it through the Big Shot? It's nine inches by nine and a half inches. That's not gonna fit through. I'll show you my little trick for that. First, what I wanna do is measure where I want to cut my framelits and I am using today the oval framelits. I'm using the third smallest framelit from the set. And I first wanna mark where this is going to go. That's gonna act as my window to look inside my box to see the tags inside. So the first thing I wanna do is figure out my placement. So I'm just going to take a pencil and I'm actually going to mark this on the opposite side. So the side you're going to mark, if you were to uh, put this together and glue it, the little half inch here is going to go on the inside of your one inch side when you glue it together, that's how it will go. So I know this is the top of my box because I have a nice finished edge here. The bottom of the box has this kind of open edge gap once you glue it down. So this is the top of my box. This is the side I'm going to cut on. So here's my one inch. I'm gonna flip it over. Here's the top of my box. I'm going to set my liner on the top and match up the sides and give myself the same amount of space from this one inch score line to the liner and from this score line to the liner. And then I'm going to gently mark with a pencil. You're not gonna see the inside, so it really doesn't matter, you could use a pen. I'm just marking where those inserts are. Don't push too hard or else you will see kind of a dent on the other side of your paper. So now that I have the placement for that, I'm gonna take a ruler and just connect those lines that I drew just to, so I can see it a, a little better. And I know that this paper is super busy, so it may be a little hard to see, but if you just measure it yourself, then you'll be able to kind of get an idea on where you want to place your framelit so that you have a much better centering of your cutout. So now that I have the big shot out, I am going to take this out like so over my cutting plate. This is the, the cutting plate that goes on top of the thin die adapter. So I'm placing my paper over my cutting plate and I'm going to wrap it around at that 
score line. So I have my one inch here, and then here's my next score line, and this is the other score line, so my one inch here. So I just have my half inch and the back wrapped around the plate. And you're gonna wanna gently feed this through because you don't want this edge to tear. So just be very careful when you do this step. I'm gonna take my framelit and I'm going to center that right in my first window space. I'm gonna lay my cutting, my second cutting plate on top, trying careful not to move this, and then gently feed that through. And I'm just going in as far as to cut that out. I am going to save this shape for a future project. Okay, we have our first window cut out. Now gently feed it through a little bit more and we will continue to cut the other three. Now, as I get further and further, I don't want to run this paper through my Big Shot more than necessary with the cutting plate on top because I have a lot of, as you can see, these are well loved and I don't want any of those marks to get onto my paper. So when I do my next two, you can either come in from the other side, but what you can also do is just lay your plate right over the part that you want to cut and then you can feed it through like that and it will only press hard against that one section. And when you take this out, you now have your windows cut out. Okay, so now that we have our box cut out, we have our little windows cut, I am going to make sure that this is looking well. Everything looks pretty darn good. I am so excited for these windows, you guys. Look at how cute so far. Before we adhere this together, I will take a window sheet and glue that onto the wrong side of our box top. For your window sheet, you want to trim a piece down that measures three and one quarter by eight and three quarters. The piece I have is just slightly shorter than eight and three quarters. It's about eight and a quarter, which will work. It's a little bit more difficult to glue on the edges, but make sure that if you're able, use a piece that is eight and three quarters inches long by three and a quarter inches wide. So I'm bringing back in my box cover and I am going to glue my window sheet down. I want to try and glue this down and make sure that it covers both sides here and it does not touch the score line on either side because it may make the box a little bit difficult to fold up if it touches. And it is difficult to see especially on this busy pattern but we're going to work with it. So what I am going to do is take some fast fuse. First of all, I'm going to run a little bit in between each one of those windows. And I'm being very careful on this designer series paper because since I cut these ovals out, I don't want it to rip. So I put some in between each window and then I'm going to put a little bit, I'm just making essentially an eye in between each. I just really wanna make sure that that window sheet stays in place between those windows. Now I am going to run a little bit above each window. And below. And it's okay if you run a little bit over the window. You can just simply push back and fold over any adhesive that pokes through the other side. And also a little bit on the edges. Now on the edge, it's going to be tricky since my piece is a little smaller than the size you should be working with. So it should be okay for you, but I'm going to be careful as I run my adhesive over the edge. All right, and then we're going to grab that adhesive sheet 
and making sure I have equal amount of space all the way around and it covers all of my windows and I am not touching the score lines. And if you have any extra sticky bits, you can just use your adhesive remover or your finger to get that untacky. Okay, now we are ready to glue this bad boy up. So what I'm going to do is run some adhesive along that half inch line. And for that, I am going to use my tear and tape adhesive. And I'm going to run that right along the score line. And I'm going to fold it over like so, and then fold this edge in. And there is our lovely window cover. <gasps> Turned out so cute, I am so excited so far. Now put, you can glue your insert inside if you'd like, but I am going to leave it unglued. That way the recipient, once they use all of the Christmas tags, they can take the insert out and use the box for something else, or they can leave it in. It's really their choice. So now I'm going to slide my insert into my cover. and it is a bit of a squeeze. I personally like it a little more snug. That way it doesn't come apart on you and it is nice and fitted. To give my outer box more of a finished look, I'm taking about 16 inches of our Whisper White Organza ribbon and I'm just going to tie a simple knot right around between the first two windows. I'm going to take some Cherry Cobbler Baker's Twine along with some of the adorable mini pine cone embellishments. I'm going to use two. And I'm going to thread that Baker's Twine through. One. And two. And because I want to make sure that they don't slide too much on my twine, I'm actually going to tie one knot and center those kind of in the middle of my twine, like so. And then I'm going to tie that twine around that knot. Make a bow. Okay, that is the embellishments and the finished gift tag box. Go ahead and stay tuned to see what kind of gift tags I'm going to fill this lovely box with. Thank you guys so much for joining. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, leave me a comment, and hit that subscribe button to be notified when I post new content. And don't forget to stay tuned for my next episode where I make tags to fill this lovely gift box. Thank you guys so much and have a great day.